Hello, everybody. Looks like the gauge says it's empty. Let's take a walk into the kitchen and see what's in the fridge today, guys. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Grace Beer Reviews today. Hopefully this is going to be a big treat. Uh, this was sent to me by Chris. He sent me a couple beers. He sent me beers before though, but uh, this, this package had a couple beers in it and this was one of them. This is Tired Hands Brewing Company. This is the Weed Eater Imperial or Double IPA. And this is a big beer at 9.3%. So this is a, not a huge beer, but uh, it's... 9.3%, that'll get you in a hammer lane pretty quick. Uh, especially if you're drinking more than one. This is a 16 ounce can, so uh, pretty impressive uh, ABV on, on this beer. So, uh, And uh, I've had two different guys send me some Tired Hands beers, and luckily for me that they've not sent me the same beers, uh, and I've had different stuff sent from both of those guys. So Chris, thanks a bunch for sending me uh, uh, the beers, especially this one. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be a wonderful beer. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, Tired Hands, uh, they're out of Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's in a plain Jane silver can with a stick-on label. Uh, very similar to uh, what a, a lot of the New England breweries are doing. Uh, uh, I've had quite a few that have been sent to me that they're just using the plain Jane can and putting a wraparound sticker on there and I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. I'd rather them spend their money on what's inside the can than a bunch of fancy high dollar artwork that's on the outside of the can and the beer be crap on the inside. So spend your money on the, on what's inside the can and not what's on the outside of the can. Uh, that's, well, that's the way I feel about it anyway. So let's get on with this one here, guys. Uh, he sent me a letter to go along with this and he tells me that uh, they're it says here, the beers of Tired Hands have brewed itself in the oven for three years. However, they got their canning line a little over a month ago. Tired Hands has no distribution, so everything is picked up fresh at the brewery. They only can two beers one day a week, and the yield is usually only 100 cases each. About 300 plus people wait in line every week, hours before opening to get some cans, including Chris. And they usually sell out within the hour. So, yeah, pretty, pretty small brewery, pretty big following. I mean, when you get that many people standing in line and they sell everything that they make right there at the brewery. Uh, pr pretty small operation, but they're doing some really good tasty stuff if that many people are standing in line to get it. Uh, the cans do not have a date or an ABV. Hopefully we'll fix that soon since the canning is fairly new to them. Hope you enjoy them. Looking forward to your views, Chris. And he tells me, Weed Eater is a 9.3 double IPA. And he tells me, Melon Grassy tastes very similar to a Treehouse Green. And that's one of the other breweries up there, Treehouse, that is doing some phenomenal beers, guys. And this is about everything they do. It's, it's what has been sent to me is very cloudy, very hazy, unfiltered beers, which are damn tasty. Awesome beers. So let's see what this one brings to the table. Uh, I don't have a commercial description here, so we'll go straight over the food pairings, barbecue, cheeses, the pepper, Monterey pepper jacks, sharp blue cheddar, stronger cheeses, gorgonzola Limburger, and the meat is game, grilled meat and salmon, glass for a snifter, tulip, oversized wine glass, got my favorite glass. And it says here it can be cellared, but that's a damn lie. You don't want to cellar your IPAs or double IPAs, you want to drink them especially you can get your hands on them, guys. Uh, hops are going to fade. I tell you this all the time. Hops are going to fade. Uh, if you want a malt bomb, throw it in the fridge for six, eight months. That's what you're going to end up with. All right, let's get it popped open here. Like I said, this is a 16 ounce can. Enough to share. Always looks very hazy and cloudy coming out of the can. So, looks like an unfiltered beer. 
I mean, it's going to have a lot of taste. Yeah, that's all I'm going to pour in there, and I'll set this up there where y'all can see it. Wow, look at that. Don't that look like a glass of orange juice there? I mean, you cannot see no light whatsoever. That looks exactly like a glass of orange juice. Didn't, I didn't pour it super aggressive, so uh, uh, the head is just barely covering the top of the beer, and a little bit lighter down here on the thin part of the glass. That looks exactly like a treehouse beer to me. Uh, very cloudy, very hazy, very juicy, very pulp, resinousy. Is that a word? It is now. Let's get a nose on it. Oh yeah, oranges, pineapple, <sighs> very piney, very citrusy. I am getting some melon, melons in here. And mangoes and tangerines and oranges. Man, it is loaded. I'm not getting a lot of grassiness on the nose. I usually don't get a lot of grassiness from the uh, from the IPA and stuff. I do get a lot of that from the lagers and stuff a lot of times, but I'm not getting any grassiness. I'm just getting little boatloads of hops and citrusiness and grapefruit and pineapple. Wow, that smells awesome. It's time. Let's get it on. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Chris. Thank you, my brother. Wow. Wow. Oh, man, the aroma on this beer. A lot of times these breweries, when they do these unfiltered beers, and, and, and they just... They pump it right out, and, and it's got all the pulp and stuff uh, in, still in there, and it's cloudy and hazy. You don't have a lot of floaties or a lot of junk in the trunk floating around in there, but it is, it is, it is cloudy as a glass of orange juice, guys. It, it really, to me, that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like a glass of orange juice. I swear, it's what it looks like. A lot of delicious, deliciousness in this beer. They left all the goodies in there. They didn't filter them out. Wow, what a well-made beer for 9.3%. That alcohol is so well hidden. This is delicious. You guys that are up there in, uh, in Pennsylvania, where these guys are from, uh, Ard, Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Well, I see why they stand in line. And they sell out everything and they don't distribute anything. You buy it at the brewery, you stand in line, you buy it there, and then it's gone. And then you come back next week and, and, and they'll do the same thing over and over again. Well, this is awesome. This is, damn, this is awesome. This is right up with the treehouse stuff to me. I don't know if I want to pull her glass or not. I might have to pull the rest of this in there and just give her a sip or two. What do you think? Yeah, that's what I do. Boy, I can hear the hate mail on coming now. All right, guys, let me sip on for a little bit. I'll be right back and we'll do the final two. All right, guys, I'm back. This beer is awesome. Uh, I, I realize that they are very small and everything that they brew sells out. People stand in line and, and get it. Uh, but still, I... I would like to see a date on the can, on the bottom of the can somewhere, uh, just to ease my OCD. Uh, anytime I see an IPA or a double IPA or anything hoppy like that, or a low ABV beer without a date on it, it kind of, kind of sticks in my craw a little bit. Uh, but I understand, very small, producing great beers, selling out everything that they produce at the brewery. There is no distribution; it doesn't go to the stores. So, uh, guys. Uh, on the fence between a 9 and a 10, it's, it's an awesome beer. Uh, and pro I'm probably going to give it the benefit of the doubt since they are not distributing anything. You buy everything at the brewery uh, so you know how fresh it is. I mean, they sell out everything that they make. It doesn't even go to the stores. So, uh, But I'm not a big fan of standing in line two or three hours and get my hands on a beer. So, uh, But a lot of these breweries that's, that's making awesome beers like this, that's 
that's how they get started and that's how their name gets out there and that's how uh, that's how they progress into be top-notch breweries I mean it's whoever the brewery is there tired hands knows exactly what the hell to do to produce a great beer that people will stand in line for to get their hands on so let's do the final show To me, guys, this is a 10 beer. But because it doesn't have a date on it, and that's just me, if you say, oh, it's a 10 beer, I'm not going to argue with that. It is a 10 beer. But I want to see a date on it somewhere. I want it on the bottom of the can or, or whatever. So I'm going to give it to 9. Even though it is a 10 beer, it's a 10 beer all the way, other than having the date on it. Uh, and like I said, uh, it doesn't even get to the stores. They don't even send us to any of the stores. Everything is sold at the brewery and it sells out every time they let it release it every week. Everything that they produce, they stand in line for and they buy it up as soon as it's released. So, wonderful beer. Awesome beer. 9.3%. Super well hidden. If you if you were to try to drink this uh, at a bar or a pub, which I doubt that's happening, uh, since they're so small and, and selling out everything they put in, a, in their cans. I don't know if they are distributing anything to any local restaurants or bars or, or anything. I don't know enough about Tired Hands, so whether they are doing that, to, just to get some clientele to come in and stand in line to get their beers. So, uh, But I am glad they're putting it in cans, so guys like Chris can send me uh, beers to review and uh, this beer is freaking awesome guys it is it's uh, right up there with the uh, the uh, treehouse beers in my opinion it's uh, it's very very well done very well done awesome beer guys if I was petty rating on this guys it'd be a 98 or a 99 it's it's that close and then, like like I said I could just easily give it a 100 uh, because uh, everything is sold at the brewery and not gone to distribution. You're not going to find this at a store without a date on it. You're going to get it at the brewery and you know how fresh it is. So It's right there. I mean, 98 99 for me. Uh, there, the uh, uh, the uh, Beer Advocate site says it's an 88. I think it's much better than that. I think it's 10 points better than an 88. And over to uh, Rate Beer. Rate Beer says 98 over all 93 in the style. I'm more inclined with these guys on this particular beer. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's a 98. I'd, I'd even step up to say it's a 99 beer. It's pretty damn tasty. It's uh, It's got everything going on with the citrusiness and, and the grapefruit and the hints of pine and tangerine and oranges and melons. and Oh, man, it's got a lot of stuff going on. It is. It's a very tasty double IPA. And the alcohol is so well hidden for 9.3%. It's delicious. It's freaking delicious. Alright guys, if you've had this one from Tired Hands, this is the Weed Eater Double IPA. Let me know what you think of it, guys. I thought it was damn freaking tasty. Thanks, Chris. I do appreciate it, sir. Come back tomorrow. Let's see what we dig out of the fridge then. See you then.